In the center of our solar system lies a serial killer. Here, where the powerful explosions occur, violent forces have erupted time and time again, leaving only destruction and disruption in their wake. A century and a half ago, it erupted with such intensity that it may have been the biggest explosion in the solar system in all of human history. And today, the countdown to the next big disaster has begun once again. It's a story of a star that's both our creator and destroyer. It is the story of our sun. It's August 4th, 1972. Crew members aboard the U.S. Task Force 77 aircraft are flying over the strategic ports off the coast of North Vietnam. It's the midst of the Vietnam War. During their flyby of the Haiphong Harbor, they are jolted with a series of deafening explosions. Despite the clear weather and the absence of any visible warships in sight that could have caused such a disturbance. In total, around 20 to 30 explosions were documented in a mere 30 second span. All of these explosions had happened underwater. The mines had been strategically planted there three months earlier by the United States Navy themselves as part of Operation Pocket Money, a U.S. plan to block North Vietnam from maritime trade during the Vietnam War. And these mines were supposed to detonate when a ship passes above them. The mine would sense a change to the magnetic field density and trigger an explosion. But instead, all of them blasted on their own. For over four decades, the cause of this event remained shrouded in mystery until a recent study of the newly declassified U.S. Navy documents revealed that the culprit was not of any earthly origin, but rather someone from above, the sun. The sun. It is an object in our solar system that really needs no introduction. For centuries, its power has spoken for itself. To the ancient Egyptians, the sun god Ra was one of the most important and powerful deities. He was often depicted with the head of a falcon and the sun disk on his head symbolizing his connection to the sun. As the solar god, Ra's radiance would warm the land, bring life to crops, and cast its golden glow across the Nile's tranquil waters. Ra was believed to be the creator of the world, responsible for bringing light and life to the cosmos. A radiant deity, who skillfully upheld the universe's harmony with his brilliance reaching every corner of existence. Therefore, with such a deep influence on their culture, the ancient Egyptians revered the sun god Ra not only for his life-giving power, but also for his role as the ultimate judge, observing the actions of humanity from his divine vantage point. And so there are many instances where Ra was also associated with his destructive forms. One of the most well-known destructive aspects of Ra was his eye, often referred to as the Eye of Ra. This eye could transform into a lioness or a fiery, aggressive form, 
representing the destructive power of the sun's heat and light. It was believed that Ra could send his eye as a raging weapon to punish or destroy those who opposed him or threatened cosmic order. Egyptian mythology is filled with stories much like this one, wherein Ra's anger or displeasure could lead to destructive events such as droughts, plagues, or other natural disasters. Ra's anger and furious aspect were symbolic of the potentially destructive power of the sun's rays when unchecked. Even today, centuries later, the cultural resonance between the fury of the Eye of Ra and the unrestrained power of the sun endures across various mindsets. So too in the perspectives of modern-day astrophysicists. According to NASA, in an increasingly technological world, where almost everyone relies on cell phones and GPS controls, not just your in-car map system, but also airplane navigation and the extremely accurate clocks that govern financial transactions, space weather is a serious matter. Recently, you might have encountered an array of news articles delving into the escalating violence and instability displayed by our sun. It's nearly becoming routine for the sun to unleash at least one solar storm per week. Just a few weeks ago, in June, the sun gave rise to over 160 sunspots, a count not surpassed in more than two decades. It's the beginning of what scientists call the peak of the Solar Cycle 25. And while many space agencies predicted a maximum monthly count of 125 sunspots during the 25th Solar Cycle's peak, the star is now on a trajectory to peak at just under 200 monthly sunspots. But what's driving this change in the sun's behavior? How did the sun trigger the mine explosions? There are plenty of questions. And as always, space phenomena rarely have any straightforward answer. But let's start from the beginning. About 4.6 billion years ago, a massive cloud of gas and dust in space also known as a molecular cloud, began collapsing under its own gravity. What triggered this collapse is still a matter of debate among scientists. But according to the latest research and the prevailing consensus, the collapse is believed to have been set in motion by a nearby event that sent powerful shockwaves, such as a supernova explosion or the gravitational forces exerted by young stars as they compressed the surrounding gas. Because of the shock wave, the molecular cloud began to contract, starting to spin faster and faster and finally flattened into a rotating disk due to the conservation of angular momentum. This flattened disk would eventually give rise to our future solar system. In the center of this spinning disk, a dense region began to form due to gravitational attraction. Drawing in gas and dust from the surrounding area, this dense core accumulated more and more material. And as the core grew in both size and mass, its gravitational pull intensified, thus attracting even more material. Eventually, the increasing pressure caused temperatures in the core to skyrocket, reaching millions of degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. At these super-high temperatures, a process known as nuclear fusion began to initiate. Hydrogen atoms in the core collided with each other with such force that they merged and formed helium atoms, releasing an untold amount of energy in the process. Pushing against the pull of gravity that was attempting to crush the star's material, 
the energy from these nuclear fusion reactions strive to move outwards, creating a pressure that sought to expand the star. This delicate equilibrium between outward pushing energy and the inward pulling gravity established a stable state that has persisted for billions of years. The inception of this balance marked the birth of a new star in the universe, our Sun. This outward moving energy travels from the Sun's layers to its surface, where it's emitted as sunlight. This energy manifests as both light and heat, extending to every planet and object within our solar system. Fast forward to the present day and the Sun finds itself halfway through its life cycle, shining about 30% more brightly than it did in its earlier stages. It currently experiences the most stable phase of its life cycle, known as the main sequence, a state it has maintained since its inception roughly 4.6 billion years ago. Therefore, unlike most other violent stars, our Sun has provided for a relatively stable environment in which life can flourish. Its energy permeates nearly every facet of life on our planet. The vitality of our ecosystems, the warmth that embraces us, and the sustenance of countless organisms all hinge on this cosmic wellspring. The Sun's light forms the bedrock of our existence, nurturing growth, guiding weather patterns, and invigorating Earth's complex web of life. Just look at how precisely it provides just the right amount of warmth and light, enabling plants to undergo photosynthesis, wherein they harness the sun's energy and convert it into essential carbohydrates. Gradually, this solar energy travels up the food chain, ultimately nourishing us humans. As we consume and metabolize this food, we gain the crucial energy that keeps our bodies functioning properly. This transfer of energy traces a remarkable path back to the sun, the source of all life and the first link in the food chain. The sun is our creator. Yet, beneath its gentle cradle, Shadows of uncertainty have found refuge for billions of years. Visualizing the sun via the eyes of space observatories reveals an entirely different story. Much like every other star, even our own star boasts a landscape of dynamic activity. In fact, the most powerful explosions in the solar system occur here. Each passing second witnesses the generation of more energy through these eruptions than humanity has consumed throughout its entire history. And to be fair, it's perfectly normal for our sun to produce this much energy. However, problems start arising when such huge amounts of energies get trapped and locked within the sun. Similar to how Earth's magnetic field is created by the movement of its core, the Sun also possesses its unique magnetic field generated by the motion of charged particles in its superheated core. Emerging from the solar surface, this magnetic field extends beyond the confines of the Sun's outermost atmospheric layer, reaching out into the vast expanse of the solar system. Accompanying it is the unending stream of solar particles known as the solar wind. The solar wind consists of a continuous flow of charged particles, primarily electrons and protons that journey outward from the sun into outer space. This wind emerges from the sun's incredibly high temperatures and the intense energy present within its outermost layer known as the corona. The corona's extreme heat provides enough kinetic energy to propel particles to achieve tremendous speeds, allowing them to break free from the sun's gravitational grasp. This process gives birth to an uninterrupted cascade of such particles. This solar wind, however, is far from uniform. 
It comprises a complex mixture of particles, characterized by varying speeds, densities, and energies that form an unceasing yet ever-changing stream that permeates the entirety of the solar system. Their journey is facilitated by the Sun's magnetic field, which guides the path of these particles and gives rise to a form of space weather. During a typical day, the solar wind flows continuously past the Earth 24-7, distorting its magnetic field and pulling it around the back in a tail-like structure. Our Earth's magnetic field easily manages to withstand most of these winds. Some of them engage with Earth's magnetosphere and atmosphere. Different gas particles in the atmosphere produce different colors in auroras. Nitrogen atom auroras look red, oxygen green, and hydrogen blue. Auroras become visible in various locations depending on the intensity of the solar wind striking Earth. And as a result, these otherwise dangerous particles from the Sun are rendered harmless and become a rather beautiful phenomenon. These breathtaking displays of light are a common occurrence on nearly all planets within our solar system, and they typically do not cause harm or disruption to planetary routines. However, as the rotational speed between the Sun's poles and equator increases, it initiates a twisting motion in the magnetic field, giving rise to a complex and entangled structure and amplifying its power even further. This results in the formation of magnetic knots that accumulate enormous amounts of energy, akin to a coiled rubber band. When these knots eventually twist and snap, the pent-up energy is released into space. If Earth finds itself in the wrong place at the wrong time during such an energy discharge, Events like geomagnetic storms can unfold. The last time a strong solar wind hurricane washed over Earth was in 1859, the Carrington event, the largest geomagnetic storm ever observed on Earth. September 1, 1859. A powerful storm started gathering force on the surface of the sun. It's the beginning of the most violent explosion in our solar system. In a matter of minutes, a blazing arc began its ascent from the surface of the Sun, surpassing the size of Earth multiple times over. At some time during noon on that very day, the arc finally reached its breaking point, and a huge mass of solar material was ejected into space. Only one slight problem. It was pointed squarely at Earth. The event, however, hadn't gone unnoticed. An English astronomer by the name of Richard Carrington was independently observing the sun using his telescope when he suddenly noticed something odd. Through his lens, he spots two bright flashes of light bursting onto the surface of the sun. However, lacking a comprehensive understanding of this newfound phenomenon, he failed to grasp the significance of what had just transpired. He moves on and resumes his study of the sun as usual, believing that there was no sign that anything should be amiss. But although he didn't realize it then, Richard Carrington had just witnessed the beginning of something that would eventually become the most intense solar storm in all of human history. Racing at a velocity of around 2,000 kilometers per second, the solar outburst hurtled closer to Earth with every passing minute, on track to make impact within the next 18 hours. As darkness enveloped half the globe, the majority of the population remained blissfully oblivious to the imminent disaster that would unfold in the hours to come. It is September the 2nd, 1859, 
the Earth is finally struck by a powerful solar storm. Observers from around the globe are treated to its arrival. Particles from the solar outburst energize the atoms present in the upper layers of Earth's atmosphere, giving rise to a mysterious glow in the night sky at various locations. Reports indicate that that night, these lights, now known as auroras or northern or southern lights, were visible even down to regions such as Europe, North America, and even as far as Mexico and Cuba. People woke up at night confused and still tired. They were sure it was already morning since it was so bright outside. But when they peered out of their windows, they discovered it wasn't the sunlight. The skies were lit by countless intense auroras, red, green, and purple. People gathered and gazed upwards, terrified and awestruck in equal measure. Many people around the world had never seen an aurora before, so they were unsure of how to interpret the sky's unusual brightness. For almost a week, those living in the northeastern part of the United States could read a newspaper just using the aurora's light. The vast majority had no idea what they were witnessing and only surmised it to be the end of the world. However, as mesmerizing as the auroras were, an unsettling occurrence had unfolded. The telegraph which was the sole communication system at the time, had caught fire along the lines at several places. The intense surge of solar energy overloaded the telegraph lines, causing widespread fires and electrical malfunctions at multiple points along the network. With the telegraph system paralyzed, communication breakdowns caused confusion, delays, and economic losses emergency responses were hindered, and families separated by distance couldn't connect during the crisis, adding to their worries. The aftermath was dire. The collapse of the telegraph system induced disruptions that persisted for several days. But shockingly, in certain regions, there were reports that people could still use their devices and send and receive messages as if an electric charge coursed through the air. In the majority of cases, however, there were operators who encountered electric shocks while handling their devices, with telegraph pylons crackling with sparks. Repairing the lines consumed months of dedicated effort. People simply couldn't wrap their heads around what was happening, and back then, very few people knew that the sun was to blame for the chaos. The event marked our first silent warning, a clear indication that our otherwise peaceful star, located 90 million miles away from us and visible to us every day, possessed the power to disrupt our way of life and communication. Fortunately, in those days, our reliance on electricity and electronics was minimal. So we were lucky enough to escape with such a small warning. By looking back in time, you'll quickly realize that it's nothing short of a miracle just how narrowly and closely we have escaped numerous technological and economic doomsday scenarios that could have arisen from the sun. May 15, 1921. The 1921 Railroad Storm of New York, also known as the Great Railroad Storm, stands as another witness of the horrors that space weather can wreak. In the early 1920s, railroads were the vital arteries and lifelines of transportation and commerce connecting cities and industries across vast distances. Telegraph communication was an essential tool for coordinating train schedules, managing operations, and ensuring the safety of passengers and cargo. 
May 15, 1921 changed everything. A colossal solar storm erupted from the sun's surface, unleashing a powerful burst of solar plasma towards Earth. The burst was so massive and energetic that it disrupted the Earth's magnetic field in minutes upon impact. As the solar storm's charged particles interacted with the Earth's magnetic field, powerful induced currents surged through the extensive telegraph network that ran parallel to the rail lines. Telegraph operators stationed in railroad hubs suddenly found their communication lines plagued by intense interference. Messages became garbled and crucial instructions were lost amidst the chaotic signals. The disruption of telegraph communication had severe consequences for the smooth functioning of the railroad system. Train schedules became erratic and unreliable, causing delays and confusion for passengers and freight. Dispatchers struggled to relay critical information and the coordination of train movements became a formidable challenge. March 13, 1989. A hundred and thirty years later, on March 13, 1989, the sun unleashed its power once again, with repercussions even more profound. This time, the entire Canadian province of Quebec was blacked out. Once again, the massive influx of electrical currents and charged particles from the sun overwhelmed the transmission lines and caused a cascading failure across the province's power grid. Within seconds, the entire electrical network was compromised and Quebec was left in complete darkness. More than six million people were left without electricity for several hours with frigid winter conditions adding to the challenge. The outage brought life to a standstill, disrupting transportation systems, shutting down businesses, and leaving residents stranded in buildings and elevators. The lack of electricity also resulted in the shutdown of water treatment plants, leaving citizens without access to clean water. The impact of the blackout even extended beyond Quebec's borders, affecting parts of the northeastern United States as well. But while the American grid was more resilient, the interconnected nature of the power systems meant that the disturbances could have easily spread across the region, highlighting the vulnerability of interconnected electrical networks. As darkness and silence blanketed the cities during that night, they resembled nothing more than eerie ghost towns. Some regions had their power restored within a few hours, while others took several days to recover. July 23, 2012 A modern-day wake-up call resounded in 2012, when the end of the Mayan calendar stirred widespread fears of an asteroid collision that could extinguish all life as we know it. Although nothing like that happened, fate, however, took a different course, and something truly unexpected did take place that year. On July 23, 2012, the scariest chain of events overtook our entire solar system. Two enormous bursts of charged outbursts were released by the sun. Expansive, electrified gas clouds rapidly expanded and raced outward. Fortunately, our planet was present on the other side at the time of this eruption. However, had this event occurred just nine days earlier, our planet would have been squarely in the path of that storm. It could have taken as much as a decade to fully regain normalcy and an onslaught of major disruptions to electronics, communications, and power grids on the ground, to aviation equipment and satellites in the sky would have been inevitable. Even the depths of the ocean would not have been spared. With underwater online communication cables facing destruction, 
the world would have plunged into a months-long internet apocalypse. With estimated damages reaching billions, if not trillions of dollars, total havoc would ensue on the ground, in the sky, and beneath the waves. And the truth is, some countries might still be grappling with the aftermath of that powerful solar wind even to this day. Given our ever-expanding reliance on technology, the rapid pace of scientific advancements, and our ambitions in space exploration, it's becoming increasingly apparent that underestimating the sun's impact on Earth is a blunder humanity can no longer afford. This realization of the sun's capacity to influence our way of life has brought us face to face with a new kind of burgeoning field, heliophysics. Using data from the sun's exterior, scientists globally have started monitoring and modeling these fields as they erupt all around the sun's surface, twisting and looping. Plasma rising toward the surface follows these magnetic field lines, which can sometimes stifle the rising columns, forming relatively cool patches. That's where sunspots form. Each sunspot can be anywhere from 15 kilometers in size to around 160,000 kilometers. That's 10 times the size of Earth. Four centuries ago, with the advent of telescopes in the 17th century, astronomers worldwide gained the ability to closely observe the sun's surface. Not knowing that looking at our very own star would damage his eyesight, Galileo Galilei pointed his telescope towards the sun. He discovered that the sun has dark, moving spots. He called them sunspots. Galileo's telescopic observations of sunspots marked a turning point in the systematic study of the sun. He was the first to argue that these blotches were actually on the sun's surface, though he suspected they were clouds. He made several other groundbreaking observations, leading to the realization that the sun was not a perfect, unblemished sphere, but a dynamic entity with its own set of mysteries. The nature of these sunspots remained unclear until 1908, when astronomer George Ellery Hale demonstrated the link between them and magnetic fields. Over time, scientists have carefully studied the peculiar shapes of sunspots in their quest for understanding. What they didn't see until recently was the pressure building around them. Using data from the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, scientists are learning to read undulations on the surface of the Sun, the results of pressure waves ricocheting through its volume. Like the study of earthquakes on Earth, this field, called helioseismology, is a window into the movements of gases inside the Sun. It can also generate predictions of sunspots, including those forming on the far side. Detectors aboard the SOHO spacecraft have managed to catch the movement when the energy capped by a sunspot is suddenly released. A shock wave travels rapidly outward, like a solar tsunami, with enough force to circle the star. That signals the start of a coronal mass ejection, or a CME. A coronal mass ejection is a powerful event on the Sun where it releases a huge burst of charged particles, magnetic fields, and plasma into space. With a coronagraph to block out the bright light of the Sun, we can see how violent our Sun can get. If a CME is detected blasting out from behind this artificial eclipse, you know that our satellites and power systems on Earth are going to get hit hard, especially if it's been launched in the direction of where Earth will be in its orbit in about 24 to 36 hours. 
When solar winds of a coronal mass ejection event hit Earth, it's an entirely different story. They'll severely compress Earth's magnetic field as they pass, creating an intense geomagnetic storm. And when a magnetic field line breaks, the charged particles trapped in it travel back to Earth, inducing electrical currents into the Earth's surface and anything running over it, such as power lines. It'll also pack the boundary of Earth with solar plasma. As this plasma interacts with Earth's magnetic field, turbulence emerges along its leading edge. Cracks begin to form, puncturing and creating openings in Earth's protective shield, enabling the entry of vast amounts of radioactive particles into the atmosphere. These particles originate from another phenomena known as solar flares. These coronal mass ejections are not isolated events. Instead, they often coincide with something known as solar flares. A solar flare can be conceptualized as a volatile eruption transpiring on the sun's surface, varying in duration from minutes to hours. These flares materialize as surges of charged radioactive particles and X-rays, hurtling towards space at the speed of light. Large solar flares can release enough energy to power the entire United States for a million years. And to better understand their nature, scientists have classified flares according to their strength. The smallest ones are B-class, followed by C, M, and X as the largest. Similar to the Richter scale for earthquakes, each letter represents a tenfold increase in energy output. An X is 10 times an M and 100 times a C. Within each letter class, there's an even finer scale from 1 to 9. C-class flares are too weak to noticeably affect Earth. M-class flares can induce momentary radio blackouts at the poles and minor radiation storms that might jeopardize astronauts. It's the X-class flares that are the real powerhouses. Although X is the highest letter on the scale, some flares go even beyond 9 in their strength. The Carrington event was an X-45 class flare. Quebec blackout was an X-1.4 class. And the solar storm of 2012 was an X-28 class flare. The Carrington storm of 1859 is the largest recorded solar storm ever recorded. The existence of solar flares stronger than this is anyone's best guess. A powerful X-class flare like that today could create long-lasting radiation storms which can harm satellites and even get airline passengers flying near the poles radiation doses. This is what happened in 2016 to Marie Mo, a cybersecurity researcher. Mo felt her pacemaker glitch while on a plane to Amsterdam. A muscle in her chest started to twitch. She looked down and the muscle was visibly pulsating. Mo alerted the cabin crew, who arranged for an ambulance to be ready and waiting for her at the airport. The pacemaker was examined as she landed, and its data was found to be bizarrely corrupted. Once she was discharged from hospital, she received a detailed report from her pacemaker's manufacturer about what had happened. Inside the pacemaker's computer memory, data is stored in the form of bits, often referred to as ones and zeros. One of these crucial bits had inexplicably flipped or reversed, triggering the pacemaker to shift into backup mode and restore her heart rate to a default rhythm of 70 beats per minute. Although Mo believed that radioactive particles from solar flares caused the issue with her device, the link was never proved and will never be proved 
since these particles leave no measurable fingerprints behind. A similar bit-flip incident occurred during a 2008 Qantas Airways flight over Western Australia. The aircraft dropped hundreds of feet twice within 10 minutes, resulting in injuries to dozens of passengers on board. Some suffered bruises to their limbs, while others struck their heads against the cabin's interior. Once again, the link was never proven. Similarly, for decades, the phenomenon of U.S. military mines exploding in Vietnam due to solar effects remained a mystery until someone finally connected the dots. A new study accepted by the journal Space Weather has proposed a possible explanation for this enigmatic wartime event. According to the researchers, the mines were likely triggered by a powerful solar storm, which activated the mines' magnetic sensors and resulted in unexpected explosions. Many of these mines that had detonated randomly were classified as magnetic influence sea mines, designed to detect alterations in the magnetic field caused by passing ships. In the days leading up to the explosions, a sunspot region known as MR-11976 unleashed a series of brilliant flares, energetic particles, and Earth-directed ejecta. The coronal mass ejection from the Sun reached Earth in just 14.6 hours. It was an incredible coincidence that baffled military historians and scientists alike. Global radio blackouts and radiation storms in the upper atmosphere are also not uncommon consequences of severe X-class flares. Additionally, extensive mobile phone outages and transformer explosions have been reported in regions affected by strong flares in the past. These disruptions can hamper satellite operations, interrupt radio communications, and pose a risk to astronauts in space. Imagine astronauts standing on the moon's surface, focused on their mission, conducting experiments, taking samples, but suddenly the tranquility is shattered as a burst of energy erupts from the sun a coronal mass ejection. The moon, lacking a significant atmosphere and a global magnetic field like Earth's, offers minimal protection against these intense space weather events. These lethal radiation doses could pose both immediate and long-term health risks to the astronauts, potentially leading to radiation sickness and an elevated risk of cancer over time. In such a crucial scenario, the lunar module would serve as their sole refuge. These structures were designed to withstand the normal radiation levels encountered on the Moon during their missions. However, with no other option, and the sudden occurrence of a solar storm might compel the crew to seek shelter within the most shielded sections of their habitat. Fortunately, the Apollo missions did not encounter such extreme solar events. They were meticulously scheduled to avoid periods of heightened solar activity. However, as we peer into the future of space exploration, including extended lunar or Martian missions, comprehending and mitigating the risks posed by space weather events like solar storms would be essential. Developing advanced radiation shielding and early warning systems will stand as crucial elements in ensuring the safety and success of astronauts embarking on these remarkable journeys beyond our planet. As for astronauts aboard the International Space Station, which has been orbiting Earth since the year 2000, NASA made sure the station is heavily shielded. Additionally, the ISS orbits within Earth's protective magnetic field. Nevertheless, despite our preparations, the reality is 
that Earth's magnetic field strength has gradually declined over the past 200 years, weakening by approximately 10% during this period. This trend has sparked several concerns among scientists about the potential implications for our planet's defense against future solar storms. If Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken, it may reach a juncture where it becomes less effective in safeguarding our planet from these rapidly accelerated charged solar particles. Geomagnetic storms of the same level could become more severe and pose greater challenges to our technological infrastructure. Therefore, Today, it's more important than ever to predict solar storms in advance and know when the next big flare may occur. Scientists and astrophysicists posit that by seeking insight from the Sun's surface itself, we can uncover valuable clues to predict solar storms. Because intriguingly, our Sun exhibits a fascinating long-term pattern that appears to come and go, not randomly, but with a striking consistency. This pattern created by the sunspots themselves is called the sunspot cycle, and a single cycle lasts for about 11 years. It can be as short as 8 or as long as 14 years and it can vary dramatically in intensity. During one cycle, the number of sunspots, a good indicator of solar activity, goes from low to high and back down to low. Solar minimum represents a time when sunspot numbers are relatively low, and solar maximum represents a period when sunspot numbers are relatively high. During this cycle, the location of the sunspots also changes. They tend to be situated at middle latitudes during solar maximum, gradually shifting closer to the equator as the sun approaches solar minimum. At times of solar minimum, sunspots may even be absent from observation, while solar maximum can witness the presence of multiple sunspots simultaneously. The number of sunspots is important because sunspots are the visual markers of where powerful magnetic fields can emerge from the sun's interior. As discussed, these magnetic fields power solar flares and coronal mass ejections, which can affect Earth and other objects in the solar system. As these sunspots increase on the sun's surface, so does the frequency and severity of flares and CMEs. The Sun's 11-year cycle is a symptom of a longer, 22-year cycle called the Solar Cycle or Hale Cycle, which affects the Sun's magnetic fields. Every 11 years, the Sun's poles flip. North becomes south and south becomes north. Consequently, every 22 years, the poles return to their original position where the cycle began. The flip is due to the complex movement of magnetic fields inside the Sun that are constantly stretching, twisting, and crossing as solar material bubbles up from the Sun's core. But the exact pattern of movements is not yet mapped out. Because the sunspot cycle follows a similar pattern regardless of the orientation of the poles, it only takes half as long as the solar cycle. The two cycles are different, but the 11-year sunspot cycle is what is often referred to as the solar cycle. Right now, the sun is approaching solar maximum, which is the current solar cycle 25 so flares and CMEs are more common than they were a few years ago. Consequently, you might have come across numerous news articles discussing these phenomena. NASA even maintains a dedicated website where you can keep track of them yourself. The current solar cycle is expected to peak in 2025. Recognizing this urgency explains why NASA and governments around the world 
are taking space weather forecasts seriously. And to avoid being caught off guard, they have declared space weather forecasts to be a priority in the development of science. The UK government, for instance, has listed severe space weather as one of the highest priority natural hazards in the National Risk Register. Solar storms are now included on the UK National Risk Register of Civil Emergencies, and the Meteorological Office is tasked with monitoring and forecasting space weather events. The perceived risks associated with space weather events are rated as having high impact and likelihood. In response, UK scientists are currently working on developing the first space weather monitor the country has seen in a generation. The monitor will help scientists predict when and where solar storms will occur, allowing them to warn and protect Earth from the potential damage caused by these events. In the UK, the national grid has been replacing high-voltage transformers with newer designs which are more resilient to extra current surges. The strategy in the UK is that if a large CME is expected, they will turn on as much of the 8,000 kilometers of UK power lines as possible to dump the extra energy over the entire system and drain it back to Earth. Rather than allowing it to overload a few key system areas, costing costly and lengthy repairs. In the United States, the government has taken substantial measures to prepare for the potential impact of a Carrington level solar storm. One of the central elements of these efforts is the establishment of comprehensive monitoring and early warning systems. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, operates the Space Weather Prediction Center, SWPC, in Boulder, Colorado. This center closely monitors solar activity and issues alerts and forecasts regarding potential solar storms. Detected solar storm information is then disseminated to various user groups ranging from airlines and the electric power grid to emergency managers and the aviation satellite community. The United States Geological Survey, USGS, monitors the Earth's magnetic field at 14 ground-based observatories positioned across the United States and its territories. Scientists continuously monitor the geomagnetic field throughout the nation providing information on magnetic storm intensity. Remarkably, some USGS observatories have been operational for over a century. In 2016, President Obama signed an executive order aimed at orchestrating endeavors to ready the nation for space weather incidents. This directive's objective is to curtail economic losses safeguard lives and enhance national security. It mandates the establishment of comprehensive nationwide response and recovery strategies and interweaving technologies designed to alleviate the impacts of space weather phenomena. These measures undertaken are necessary since comparing the economic impact of solar storms to some famous natural disasters in the United States alone provides a stark realization of their potential consequences. The cost associated with solar storms could surpass that of the top 10 natural disasters in the U.S. combined, including events like Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Harvey, and wildfires that have ravaged the nation in recent years. Natural disasters have never known borders drawn by humans, and in the end, it's all down to the individual countries and their power companies to make sure that when the once-in-a-hundred-year CME comes along, the lights won't go out. It is truly said that no nation can ever be fully prepared for such a violent scenario. Scientists worry that one big problem with solar flares is that it has no upper limit, making them an unpredictable and formidable force to reckon with. 
The sheer scale of destruction it can unleash is beyond human comprehension. An X-Class flare can trigger one of the largest CMEs that can blast a billion tons of matter out at speeds of 3,000 kilometers per second or 1,900 miles per second. A large enough CME can also expand in size as it propagates away from the sun and then quadruple in size by the time it reaches our planet. A single CME is able to hold and release energy equal to 10 billion one megaton nuclear bombs or equal to millions of years worth of electricity usage by humanity in just a few weeks. According to NASA, the sun generates anything from one CME every week to several per day, depending on where we are in this 11-year cycle of activity. Currently, each year Earth experiences thousands of solar flares and CMEs on average. Thanks to Earth's strong magnetic field or magnetosphere, the majority of CMEs pass by our planet unnoticed by the general population, or we avoid them completely by not being in their path. Among the various solar flares produced by the Sun, most are small C-class and M-class flares. However, every once in a while, we do encounter X-class flares, accompanied by large coronal mass ejections. Most of the time, we have been lucky not to be in their path. Estimates vary, but many believe that a Carrington-level event might strike Earth, on average, once every 150 years. Over 160 years have passed since then. By some measures, we are overdue. The question has now shifted from if to rather when. The day a Carrington-level event strikes, our generation could be blindsided by an unprecedented catastrophe for which we are currently utterly unprepared. In the world we live in today, we have thousands of important satellites orbiting above. In 2022, despite warnings from space organizations, many SpaceX satellites fell from the sky during solar flares. They have lost $50 million worth of satellites to geomagnetic storms. In the future, too, if a large enough storm strikes, satellites may plummet from the sky due to lack of control and orbital guidance. On the ground, the potential damage to North America's power grid would be unimaginable. Transformers, which are extremely expensive to build, make power transmission possible. However, when a CME sweeps across Earth, these towers, designed to handle AC currents, are instead flooded with DC currents. This may cause them to overheat, melt, or even explode, as was the case in 1989 in Quebec, Canada. Life as we know it would come to a halt. Cellular towers would begin to fail. Anything reliant on local power, from your cell phone charger to critical infrastructure, would become inoperable. This includes last-mile communications as well, such as cable TV or Internet. In the absence of lighting, certain individuals might find a window of opportunity to engage in disruptive activities. You may be familiar with accounts of increased theft and burglaries occurring during power outages. The absence of usual lights and security systems would create a more conducive environment for illicit actions to take place. The usual sense of safety would disappear once the streets that used to be bustling with light become shadowy alleys. Unbridled panic buying and widespread looting from stores further exasperating the challenges faced during such times. And irrespective of the balance on your card, its monetary value becomes zero, as ATMs would cease to function, rendering it temporarily inaccessible. 
the contemporary economy would grind to a halt in the absence of electricity. Moreover, in many cities, water distribution depends on electric pumps. If the power goes out, water becomes unavailable. Plus, imagine the turmoil at the hospitals and other locations, given that the majority of our medical infrastructure depends on electricity and the internet. Imagine the situation of the people who would need critical life support systems that are powered by electricity. Hospitals could theoretically lose access to patient information. Military and defense forces rely heavily on real-time communication for strategic decision-making, coordination between units, and sharing critical intelligence. Solar storms can disrupt radio frequencies and satellite communication, potentially leading to delays or even failures in transmitting crucial information. In this setting, a soldier on the verge of a life-or-death moment would be alone, devoid of any communication. The storm's impact would extend to additional areas. With approximately 10,000 airplanes navigating the skies simultaneously, each reliant on GPS for precision, the prospect of their navigation systems going blank would mark an unprecedented catastrophe. While a fraction of flights might manage to land safely, a substantial number would find themselves in dire straits. This upheaval might not be fleeting. The aftermath could leave a lasting scar. Power grids could suffer irreparable harm unless preemptively shut down to shield them from the oncoming storm. Given the immense scale of some power systems, experts speculate that the worst-case scenario could necessitate up to a decade for a full recovery. A separate 2008 report from the National Academy of Sciences, NAS, theorized that a moderatively severe geomagnetic storm could leave 130 million Americans without power. According to FEMA, Power grids on the east and west coasts of America would be hardest hit. Furthermore, it's interesting how natural disasters often trace back to solar storms. Researchers have noticed a pattern. Earthquakes tend to surge during times of intense solar activity. This might explain the massive magnitude 9.1 earthquake in 2004 which not only shook the ground, but also triggered a devastating tsunami in Indonesia. The impact was felt across India, Thailand, Bangladesh, the Maldives, Sri Lanka, and Somalia, resulting in a staggering loss of life. Over 283,000 people gone, more than 14,000 missing, and more than a million left homeless. A few months earlier, the sun had erupted with a massive X-class solar flare. If we are not prepared, the consequences will be dire. The world at large will be thrown into chaos, because compared to the early 20th century, we are much more advanced and dependent on electricity. Scientists have been warning about this for a long time. Perhaps the present moment could be opportune for prioritizing the protection and investment of tax funds into our electrical infrastructure. Because in our modern world, it isn't a problem of the past. It's a problem that is more relevant today than ever before. We survived the recent pandemic by using remote work solutions. But these tools would be essentially useless in case of a geomagnetic storm. The scale of the event would be unlike anything humanity would have ever encountered. A moderately severe storm would cost the U.S. economy $2.6 trillion in total, and recovery could take up to 10 years, as per an NAS report. In short, a solar storm of a Carrington-level event would literally bring our high-tech society to its knees. 
Dealing with space weather is no walk in the park. And no matter how much we unravel, no matter how many various models foresee various outcomes, one lingering question is always asked. When will the next solar storm strike? Trying to predict when the next Carrington level event will strike is like aiming at a moving target. Though the estimates vary, many experts agree that people born after the 90s will likely experience an extraordinary solar storm at some point in their future. As for exact timing, it's a puzzle we're still piecing together. The space age marked a new era in solar astronomy. Satellites like the Solar Maximum Mission, SMM, launched in the 1980s, provided an unprecedented view of solar flares and eruptions in various wavelengths. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory have continued this legacy, offering real-time insights into the sun's magnetic activity, solar wind, and other dynamic processes. Ready to face the raw power of an X-class flare directed at our planet, NASA and NOAA are always on high alert, keeping a close watch on the sun. NASA's heliophysics fleet of spacecraft has our stars surrounded, giving us a clearer picture of its activities. This comprehensive view helps scientists predict and track space weather events, like flares and dramatic coronal mass ejections with greater accuracy. With a heads up, governments and companies can take steps to protect their tech and prevent worst case scenarios. For years, scientists at NASA have wanted to get up close and personal with the sun. And now they're doing just that with the Parker Solar Probe, set to give us unprecedented insights. By 2025, it's supposed to make actual contact with the sun, blazing at speeds up to 690,000 kilometers per hour or 430,000 miles per hour, making it the fastest thing humans have ever built. Beyond this, the probe has already flown close enough to the sun to detect the fine structure of the solar wind close to where it is generated at the sun's surface, revealing details that are lost as the wind exits the corona as a uniform blast of charged particles. NASA also envisions a future where solar storm sirens could be employed sounding alarms in power stations and satellite control centers worldwide, similar to how tornado sirens alert communities to impending terrestrial weather events. To achieve this, they are developing a model known as DAGGER, Deep Learning Geomagnetic Perturbation. This model employs artificial intelligence to analyze data from spacecraft observations of the solar wind. The researchers have applied an AI method called Deep Learning, which trains computers to recognize patterns based on previous samples and can provide a lead time of 30 minutes for an impending solar storm anywhere on Earth, giving enough time for critical systems to be shut down or protected. Dagger was put to the test using data from two geomagnetic storms that occurred in August 2011 and March 2015. Impressively, in each case, Dagger swiftly and accurately predicted the storm's global impact. The method's precision is such that the model can generate predictions in less than a second, with updates provided every minute according to the team's findings. But it's captivating to think that despite our technological leaps, we're still at the mercy of these celestial eruptions. There's virtually nothing we can do to physically halt a massive solar flare hurtling towards us. However, despite the obvious challenges, it's not all gloom and doom. 
Unlike the occurrences in 1859, 1921, 1989, and 2012, we are in a much, much better position to anticipate a geomagnetic storm's arrival. But how we respond to this warning would shape the aftermath of such an event. A swift and coordinated response would involve temporarily taking offline any systems that might be susceptible to damage during the event. According to experts, in this best-case scenario, a Carrington-level event might cause about a week of significant disruption worldwide. On the other hand, there's the worst-case scenario, in which we're ill-prepared or caught unaware by a sudden Carrington-level event. The result would be one of the most massive blackouts in history, a simultaneous loss of power, communication breakdowns, and the collapse of most modern technology. We're entering the riskiest phase of solar activity in this whole decade, the solar maximum of the year 2025. What if a really strong solar storm happens soon? Will we have any options? On a personal level, it's wise to take precautions outlined by the U.S. government's National Weather Service in case of an emergency. It includes keeping your car's gas tank at least half full, as gas stations rely on electricity to operate pumps. Store extra batteries for your phone, or consider getting a solar-powered or hand-crank charger. If you have a traditional landline phone, ensure you have a non-cordless receiver. This type of phone will work even without power. Regularly duplicate critical digital data and information and establish a family contact sheet with an out-of-town contact who could assist in connecting family members during an emergency. Some key actions involve staying indoors, following local authorities' instructions, and contributing to your community. By doing this collectively, we can shield ourselves from even the most severe storms to some extent. After a week, normalcy could gradually return. If we manage the disaster effectively, the aftermath could be considerably less costly compared to other natural calamities like hurricanes or earthquakes. Nevertheless, preparedness is paramount. Asteroids heading for the Earth are always kept an eye on, but these solar storms are quiet. They strike in the darkness and pose a threat to the entire modern civilization. In addition to the familiar natural disasters such as cyclones, rising floods, and volcanic eruptions, there is a new type of danger up there in space, one we've recently discovered. Space weather should be more concerning than it is. We are destined to share our existence with our sun for countless more millennia. And with each new day, as the sun rises above the horizon, it's just another reminder that we are living with a star. <laughs>